Say you don't want tanked water heater anymore, but your house is all electric like mine. In the past, tankless water heaters, electric tankless water heaters, didn't work, didn't last. The technology wasn't there. Um, they used a lot more energy. They, they, they broke down. They just did, they didn't keep up. So it wasn't really a, 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 an option. True tankless. These guys came over and we sat down and we talked about it. And I picked up one of their units and I installed it. And this particular unit is the Viro. Their newer unit, it comes up with the Wi-Fi and everything, so you can have it all on your phone, like a lot of new appliances now. Just like a gas tank water heater, tankless water heater, you get endless hot water with this unit. This is a true tankless hot water system. Um, the only difference is it's all electric, there's no gas to it. So what you need to know is you're going to have to get an electrician. Two things. First of all, you, you have to have at least a 200 amp service. And you can look in your box and it should tell you the main breaker usually will tell you 200 or more on there. You can also just add up all these and it'll tell you if, if you don't have any writing on here. And over here at the unit, it's real simple to install for the electrician. Because like I said, this unit comes with a separate breaker already here. Mm -hmm. So you have a disconnect right here, which is a good safety feature as well. Because even though you have power in here, you can toggle this off right there. And there's just posts right here, mm -hmm. and they just come down and they hook up real simple. The average cost for the electrician is probably going to be anywhere between eight and $1,200 just to have the wire ran. A lot of that is based on location of your breaker and where you want to put the unit. In, inside here there's there's a the heat exchanger which basically just the water comes in it comes over here and they, and they bring it back and forth back and forth like this through this unit. In that on the end of each one of those loops there's a there's an element and that that element's probably about 14 inches long. It's a real long element and there's four of those elements in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The minute it senses water flow, the units cycle on. Now this particular unit, which is what I really like about it, is it they don't all four just kick on all at one time and your meter starts spinning 90 miles an hour. This one, if you if you're only turn on one laboratory, it may only need one or two elements. So it's not going to use all that power all at one time. It's only going to use what it needs depending on your, your demand. Uh, and then the other neat thing is it, it always cycles. So if, if the top element fires right now when I turn the lab on and then in a couple hours something else is turned on, it cycles to the next one and the next one. That way it evens out the, the wear and tear on all the elements. So like I said, if you got one faucet going, which is probably 1.5 gallons a minute, 1.2 gallons a minute, you're probably going to have one and two elements firing. And then if, if someone jumps in the shower and they turn that on to so another two gallons, another two gallons a minute, then, then the other two are probably going to kick on. Mm -hmm. This does real well. I, like I said, I've used it for about three months. Uh, my electric bill has not gone up. This only kicks on when you're using it. You know, you're running laundry, it's going to kick on for a few minutes. You take a shower, however long you take a shower, 15 minutes. You know, 10 minutes, whatever. So since the electricity usage is, is better optimized, I would oh, think yeah. that would lead to a smaller electrical bill. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. If you have a big family, um, your electric bill's going all the time. The only problem is if you have a tank water heater and you have a big family, mm -hmm. two people take a shower, now you're waiting for hot water. Exactly. That heats back up. So you're not yeah. wasting energy, but it's an inconvenience. Yep. With this... You can have two people taking a shower at the same time, and as soon as they get out, you can have two more jump in and take a shower right afterwards, and, and, and two more after that, and two more after that. It's going to keep up. It's just going to endlessly give you hot water. You're never going to run out of hot water. Mm -hmm. That's huge for me. I mean, my four kids still lived here. That was an issue. Every morning I had to get up before everybody else, otherwise I was taking a cold shower.
Okay, I just, we got the shower, we got one shower on right now. And you can see here, our flow rate is about 1.4 gallons a minute. Hopefully you can see that. And then the incoming temperature is 62 degrees. Now the other day it was colder out, or three months ago it was colder, and I had 50, 55 degree water coming in and it was still doing the, we got the set temperature at 120 and we're putting out 120 or 121, 120. So that's one shower going, no problem. It'll keep doing that for as long as I leave that shower on. So that's a 1.4 gallons a minute. Now let's go turn on the other shower. All right, now we've got two showers running, full hot. We're still, we're at 2.9 gallons a minute, 2.8, 2.9, a little back and forth. Our set temperature is 121, we're putting out 120 degrees. So that's two showers going, and again, you can sit in there all day long and it's going to keep doing it. So it's going to keep giving you 120 degree water. 